my hair just doing something crazy. Thank you so much for waiting. I know today it was a half an hour of a late start, but really uh, it was because Rico Stan and uh, Mary Paige Flynn, one of my dear, dear friends uh, from the Fish uh, fam, she was on there and kind of giving her basically her life story outside of fish tube. And she was talking a lot about subjects that I think are super important and that I hope uh, we'll talk about again later this year too, uh, such as, you know, she did some time in, um, well, in prison and uh, then how her life has changed so much for the better since then. And just what an incredible community member uh of the fish fam she is and has been um and so i really um i really wanted to give that priority and not split the crowd that a lot of them were watching there that probably be filtering over here soon so in any case that's what's up but how is everybody doing let's start this off the right way we'll get a we'll get a um Ah, yeah. So if you guys have a nice, cool beverage to be drinking, now's the time. Somehow I cut my finger doing that one-handed, but in any case. Before we uh, stop drinking all that sugar, this is my first soda today, so... It's it is a lot of sugar, but it's it's like thirty eight grams of sugar. But it's my only like sweet treat for the day because when I have a lot of inflammation, I can't have a lot of sugar anyways. But in any case, I have a couple fish right now that I showed you guys, and that I have videos that I'm working on and all that stuff. But they're just looking real happy and frisky right now, so I want to show you guys those before we get into talking about uh what to get if you get your tax return back what the new fish are that i've seen that i'm like ooh, i gotta have that um and and whatever else you guys want to talk about so today's gonna be a relaxed stream where we're just hanging out and uh talking about whatever y'all want Stephen P. 2003 coming out the gates with a $20 super sticker. Means a lot to me, brother. Thank you so much. Rapping, Rappa Parappa, the fish trap king. <laughs> uh, always appreciated. And uh, yeah. Uh, oh, right on, Giuseppe. Yeah, Mary, Mary Page. Uh, she also does a, a stream with uh, Roxanne. The Hot Mess Express, where they co cover uh, fish stuff, kind of for beginners. But um, Roxanne does a little more in depth with betta and snails and uh, some shrimp stuff. And then um, they they mostly talk about you know just troubleshooting and also just life in general. It gets tossed in there as well. It's a very welcoming uh, community type stream. Um, Right on, uh, George got uh, Geophagus, Balzani, and more, uh, oh, and some, uh, oh, man, you got those? Uh, he got the uh, micro uh, tenopoma uh, and sorgii, man, I wish I had those, uh, with his tax return, so he already got his tax return. I, I don't know what my tax return is going to be this year. I think it's going to be, uh, I mean, I filed it and everything, but I, it, the, the estimate was like 40 bucks. Like I was so close to owing money um, just because of YouTube and everything, the bracket that that puts you in and all that jazz. Uh, so next year, it looks like, thanks to you guys, I don't mean it in a bad way, but next next year, it looks like I'll have to, report quarterly like this year this coming year um at the halfway mark and then the quarter after that so um so uh yeah there's that <laughs> um better than uh owing money oh for sure yeah uh sorry to those of you who do well unless it was like money you didn't pay up front and 
like if it's business money then that yeah that really sucks because sometimes it's hard to know what what's what and what comes out to to how things are going to work out but it sucks when it's like you you switch brackets slightly or whatever uh, the american tax systems cuckoo crazy they need to simplify the 32,000 pages or whatever it is. Well, before we talk about what I want to add to the fish room, I wanted to show y'all around a couple new uh, fish and just how some fish are doing that have colored up and that are doing really well because I've been feeding them nonstop these jars. I've been able to get this much or more out of the, the pond every single day actually multiple times a day once in the morning once at night and um this is live uh mosquito larva it's blood worms and it's also some little nymphs plus daphnia and cyclops and triclops i've got a pond kind of for each thing and uh, the mosquitoes get into everything in, at the end of the day but the the um, triclops and cyclops uh, are pretty fun little, uh, what are they, isopods? I don't know. Astrocods? I don't even know what they're considered. Uh, I'm just I'm just saying things now. So let's turn this around because you guys are going to witness also um, my new rice fish. But they're, oddly enough, this one is laying eggs in the afternoon. And so I'm touching her in the afternoon to collect her eggs. But check it out. She's been having a lot of eggs each day. These are the ones from Aquatic Arts. And these are the Pearl Scale. Uh, no heater in this tank. And, uh, you know, you don't want to scare them too badly when you're collecting from a preg or a, a holding female because a lot of times they'll ditch the eggs on a surface when you do that. And so you can kind of stalk them like this, but you don't want to like freak them out to the point where they're darting full speed um, because it they'll, they'll drop the eggs and you won't be able to find them. And right now I've already got a little container going with the eggs. So I want to show you how I collect these in case you guys haven't seen it in the past in past years so i get them in the oh no so they'll go to ground pretty frequently what why is this net like collapsing come on guys don't go to ground well you can go to ground in the in the shrubbery in the shrubbery and then bring her up and i love these nets these vinyl nets that aquatic arts creates uh, or buys rather has made um they're really cool for shrimp and for working with nano species when you need to like add water like pea puffers that can't be out of the water very long and stuff like that they're great for that um so what i do is then i take a pipette and then i can actually look at um uh, i can actually let's try to do this where you guys can see it well, there goes that remote. But I can then take a pipette and uh, let's clear out that pipette. And then I can take her eggs without being too brutal. There's the eggs. And then I can take the eggs and I can place them wherever I want. Now, in here, I have some snails. So I was kind of curious to see and shrimp. And I, and I know the shrimp generally clean the eggs. But because of that uh, problem, I think I'm going to put them uh, into this little side container on the moss. And these eggs have like a thread. See that? They have a thread and you can wrap that around something like a piece of moss. And then it'll anchor it right to that moss. But it's a sticky little thread. And we've still got some eggs in here. Plus, we want to see if she has any more or if we dropped any uh, in this little vinyl basket. But this is the, the – oh, we'll look at it on their website because I love these. And people ask me a lot of times where I got them. And the answer is Aquatic Arts. And they worked with the person 
who builds them, their hand uh, assembled and made. Now, I think we got most of the eggs off of her, uh, but you can also see that through the side of the basket somewhat. Uh, so I can see that we didn't get two, but we don't need to stress her out too much. We're just going to take these eggs now and squirt them out into the uh, community. And I like to stick them in groups. So I'll put them on that same piece of moss so that that way, um, so you guys can see there's some still hanging here. We're going to wrap that little thread that, again, she left. And that's that thread connects all the eggs. And you can actually see there's a few eggs in here. Um, and some of them are not fertile. You can actually see they're yellow um, from another batch. Or they're not yellow. They're uh, milky, rather. Yellow is fertile. Um, so I don't know if you guys can make that out. But I'm making a whole other video on that. So you guys will see that later. But I just wanted to show you guys how pretty these little gals turned out and um how i like to collect the eggs i you can use a spawning mop and then you don't have to watch all day and wait for them to have eggs to collect um but these are the pearl scale ones and they're just awfully pretty and they hold on to those eggs for a good chunk of the day um and so far i think it's the same female for three days running that's had them so I thought it would be fun before we get into anything else. Oh, and oh my goodness, we got a $10 super sticker. Thank you so much. It means a lot. I'm right now, I'm working towards saving up for the Triple Crown, trying to figure out that budget wise and everything. Um, you know, so thank you very, very much. Uh, I really do appreciate it, uh, Carolyn. So, what I wanted to show you guys are the. Fish I got from Redfish Bluefish. My buddy Jason here in Washington, he just imported a whole bunch of new, beautiful, beautiful fish. Um, and one of the ones that he didn't ever sell, I don't know why, he never sold like any of these. I think he had 10 imported and nine came in alive and well are these uh, Kaite River or Kaite River. Uh, which is really the Orinoco River. It's a tributary. And uh, the females color up this the same as the males, kind of, except the males have, like, this iridescent blue uh, streak around their face, and then the females are a little different. Now, I would bet you guys money that Mick M knows by looking right away what's male, what's female. I think that one there is female. And then, like, that's a male. Um, I think this is a male. Uh, the usual little band uh, on their face and being bright yellow doesn't apply to this variety. Uh, the kaite are, they also have these really fine checkerboards on their tail. I don't know if you guys can see that. But they've got an iridescent blue checkering there. And they've also got some uh red actually laced through there and then on their top dorsal fin and their anal fin they've got some some more just a slight touch of red um and uh so anyways they're pretty cool and this this uh see this beautiful little uh female um rice fish she's yellow She's got a yellow um, finish compared to the other ones. Some of these other ones actually have an iridescent green when you see them under the light back there. Um, they're, they're, they're green in the body, like a metallic green. And these ones are iridescent um, in general. And then they have some of the lame or lame, as it looks like it's spelled, coloring. But um, that's the sparkles. And... Uh, yeah, these are Epistogramma kaite, C-A-E-T-E. -E. Uh, and they're a species, um, they're, they're a species. See, the other thing is the, the males have green around their eyes. Their eye socket is like a metallic green, which is kind of cool. Um, and then over here, I just cleaned up a bunch of stuff in the fish room. 
um, like scraped it all uh, clear of moss and stuff that I usually just allow to chill because I like things to spawn. But I can see that like some of my crypts, and I can't remember off the top of my head which one this is, but this is one of the rare, rarer strains. Uh, this one, as well as this crypt, it's another rare one um, that just got dug up accidentally yesterday when I was cleaning everything. But they're doing really well, and they've actually been growing immersed. And then in here, we've got metallic live bears, a whole bunch of shrimp. Uh, but the Jamaican metallic live bears are the main fish in here. They've never um, spawned for me. And I don't know if the water's just not right. I tried them in a harder water tank, like I assumed at first they'd want. That's a pretty neutral tank. Um, so that's going on. Also, um, the male, uh, beautiful, this is a female. And actually, she's just starting to show some of her colors. But the male um, garamis, too, uh, the as they're called, samurai garamis, usually, um, valentii, they're actually, this guy is the one that I think may still be holding fry in his pouch, um, and he's hiding under a leaf, see if he'll come out, but he's had his pouch fully expanded, and he's been hiding, uh, I had him up in another tank for almost a full week now, and he hasn't spit, so I don't know what's up, and I tried to kind of just gently encourage it by, you know, reaching in, and look at this, we've got the red cap, and we've got another female just loaded with eggs, uh, and just so you can see, I mean, this is just, this is, this tank has a, an air stone running in it right now, but for the last year since I've lived here, it had no air stones. Look, that one's eating its eggs as we speak. Literally eating the eggs as we speak. That is frustrating to see that happening. Uh, sorry, guys. So I'm going to intervene again. I know you guys are probably like, stop it. Look at this one, though. It's got. It's actually got the eggs in its mouth. That's that's that stream or little or not stream, but that that line of them are connected to the mouth, and it's like caught in the act of of eating the babies. So we're gonna pull this one out real quick. Again, I love these little nets. I think they're seventeen bucks or twenty bucks. They're kind of expensive, but they're not just a cheap plastic. They're actually a pretty good vinyl. Um, and I'm gonna do this off screen just so you guys don't have to like wait around watch me take forever fiddling i'm just going to get this done quickly and literally i just pulled the eggs out of the the fish's mouth um and some came like a like literally some just came out like a string of pearls uh out of this fish like it's just it is not wanting to let go. Hold on, guys. It is not wanting to let go of the eggs. And there's a whole thread of them. Like you guys saw me wrap around the leaf. There's a whole thread of these eggs. Come on. Uh, maybe I can actually show you guys. There's a whole thread of these eggs coming out of the fish's mouth. So I got some. And literally, it just lifted up the fish. Th since it has so many that it must have stolen off of one of the pregnant females or maybe this is a female too I, it's hard to tell right now but again look at uh, uh let's see can you guys see that that i've got her oh no there we go so i've got the mouth and literally trying to drag out the eggs and it won't let go it is swallowing them and we're off center again but that's frustrating but I like, as I said, these baskets allow you to really get a hold of the fish and and work on something if if you have to treat them for some sort of illness or whatever. I'm just going to dump this fish back in uh, and hold on to the, the thread so that that would, yeah, that worked. So that fish let go finally. Um, and then we'll fill the basket with some water and see where those eggs ended up. The other nice thing is with the rim on this basket, you can fill it without tipping the whole basket. 
and then you can kind of see what you're doing here. And I know it might be a little nauseating to some folks to see me spinning around with the camera and all that right now. But sorry, I just, these eggs are precious to me. And uh, I can't really control when they're, when they're laying them. But let's grab that next one out. I'll really show you how full they can be of eggs. Um, and this is really due to the diet they've been getting. Um, they, these, these fish have been super spoiled lately in their diet. And actually, did she already drop them off out of being scared? Generally, the fish that have the, the eggs will hide somewhat. Um, you'll notice that. And uh, they, they don't want to be found uh, because they've got the eggs that are so vulnerable. Um, so actually, it might be she might have already finished uh, letting go of that strain, strain of them. And I don't know how they do that if, if it's attached and they have a way of releasing it, so to speak, or if it's all just, you know, physics and friction and they just pull away from it. Now we just kicked up all sorts of dust in here, but um, that's just mom of never having cleaned the tank really um, and letting a shrimp tank go for a year. Uh, and then we also have the 24 karat white clouds, but here is the beta minopina um, that a lot of people have kind of asked to see again too. Um, now that it's out, there's three of these in here and uh a local subscriber actually brought me these probably six months, eight months ago. And uh, they've just been doing great. The three, there were four, but one didn't make it like literally that day. And the other four have been great. And they've been in this little two and a half gallon tank because they're such small little fish. But I've been feeding them uh, a really fun diet uh, of live live creepy crawlies um and that really helps make them look their best um you'll see that they actually have like a purple and blue color to them usually which i think looks just stellar so i just thought i'd say that so how's everybody doing tonight by the way i know we kind of uh, rolled into things a little late uh but again i'm not sorry because of uh uh you know it was for mary's uh mary's time to shine and she she never takes the spotlight and is always so supportive in our community and uh you know i wish i could do that for everybody who's so loving and supportive in the fish fam uh you know give them an hour each to uh share their story but alas not practical so um then the black ones what's interesting about these black ones is they're really scared Anything I do with these black rice fish, they're just terrified. Like they hide like crazy. And these ones don't have a filter in their tank at all. Um, this is all just Sawasertong, Anubius, moss balls, uh, that kind of stuff. Here, let's scare some towards the front. They're the long fin black variety of rice fish. And the, the only thing I was worried about, Aquatic Arts has more of these too, is that some of them looked a little skinny out of these black ones, uh, like just for their size, like this little male, super skinny. Um, oh, wait, here we go. What were you doing hiding in the back, sweetie? So this will be quick. This one is so full of eggs that they'll all come together. So I'll position this again so you guys can see it in natural light. But these rice fish from Aquatic Arts carry so many eggs. This line, look at this. This fish has probably 20, 25 eggs on her each day. I mean, each day that she's spawning, she's got all these eggs on her. So I know that their prices are kind of expensive and shipping everywhere is bonkers right now. But rice fish right now are definitely, if you're trying to breed for profit, they're one of the better fish to be breeding, honestly. Uh, I mean, look how many eggs that is, and she still has half of them on her belly. It's insane. What's up, Kenny? What's up, Shanna? How are you guys doing? Good to see you. 
Um, I'll interact with the chat again soon, I promise. Yeah, look at all those eggs. They all just went into a, a clump right here. That's eggs, that whole thing. So, I mean, that's that's got to be... Oh, and there's more eggs still in here. That's got to be a good 20 eggs on its own. The most I've ever found in a rice fish was 28 eggs in one, one sitting. So she's got a few more eggs under her belly. Sometimes you need to see from both sides. And yeah, see, she's hiding them right here. And I got them. These are the red caps. Now she's out of air, out of water. I mean, like I sucked up all the water, but in this basket, I can put her right back in and she's fine. It's not traumatic at all on the fish, which is nice about these little baskets. So that's pretty cool. Also, what I wanted to show you guys before we get into dreaming about fish is check out these uh, lamias, these tiger lamias. Uh, well, those are these are uh, the guppies from Vinay from Color Guppies, but um, the the tiger lamias. These things are super pretty. They've got a big orange fin on them, and then they're kind of a blue and green metallic body. Let's just see if, see if we can get some more light on them. The natural light was shining in here. You can kind of see, yeah, there you can kind of see the blue. Uh, and this is some of the prettiest wild type live bears that I've seen um, out there. I mean, look at that shimmer. It is beautiful. And uh, I'm hoping to put those in the pond soon. Um, I don't think I'm going to put these guppies out in the pond, even though they're very pretty also. Uh, but here's that big female of the uh, of the metallic um, live bears. And these are all in here with the Maha Sciences uh, bettas too. So kind of cool. Also, the Radnocentris are doing really well. They're continuing to grow out. My two female uh, lemon plecos doing really well. Um, and I'll look at chat in just a moment. I want to see if these guys are colored up since everyone else is colored up. Wow, they've dug quite the... Oh, she is really colored up. So they've dug quite the little four, and I just keep praying that they have eggs. But here, let's try to kind of get her out of there. But she is bright purple. Um, oh, he's he's angry. He doesn't want me to disturb their little four. But she's bright purple and uh, really beautiful. I'm going to put their, their house back together for them. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, and their little... Their little uh, castle has been sliding because they've been digging. Uh, but they have this little trench underneath there where they have babies. Um, so in any case, put that back like this and they think they're hidden. So she's really pretty right now. The other one that's a really pretty fish right now, uh, the Trifasciatus, really a pretty male right now in the Episto. Uh, and... Again, look who's lurking in the shadows. We've got just the beautiful Ar Acara, Acaraensis aguarensis, uh, or Araguayensis. Very hard for me to say that for some reason. Acaraensis Acar aguar, uh, <laughs> eh, whatever. But look at how pretty this fish is. And, and seriously, it's feeding them this live food, these mosquitoes and and blood worms and things that's really making them show off so well. But this one is an incredible full grown fish. And he is um, probably about three and a half inches, but he's purple, blue, turquoise, and green with a black main body stripe. I don't know why this fish isn't a way more popular fish in the hobby. It is a dwarf Akara. Um, taxonomically or taxonom ta taxonic whatever scientifically related structurally due to the bones and the um the the structures of it and uh just a super pretty fish again i gotta get rid of these because they're all totally colored up and ready for war so thanks to kenny and danny of danikin um i have a big batch of these adults. And look at this one that just stayed small. But I've got a big old 
batch of colored up uh, Turkana jewel cichlids. I have another batch of teeny babies, and then I have a batch of four-week-old babies. Uh, and I wanted to show off. So what I've been doing is leaving this light on 24-7 in order to get these little white detritus worms and, and critters here. If you can see these, that, that's a snail, obviously. But what I'm trying to show off, if we can get in there, is this, yeah, see this white stuff here? This is the little worms that they love to eat, the little detritus worms. They're not planaria, and they're not the long detritus worms that you may be used to, but um, they're pretty cool uh, for fish. They, the, the babies love to eat that off the glass, and that's what really I owe to growing these so quickly. Um, also, the beta um, macrostomas with the big old mouth, um, they are getting pretty big. They're over two inches now. Uh, there's the biggest male, I'm guessing. Uh, and then this one, I'm guessing, is a female. They've been hanging out together. And then there's a third one. And I think, um, even though I really like these fish and they're really cool and all that jazz, um, I think Alyssa Bentley is going to come and get them and trade them off. Um, so hopefully I'll be getting some snow white plecos, um, and cistrus uh, cirrhosis. And, um, yeah, so we'll be switching these out because I've grown these up. I got them when they were super teeny. Like, um, if you guys remember when I got them, they were not even half an inch long. Uh, so I got them as really teeny fry that, you know, I got four of and three have made it this far, which I was surprised that even, you know, if, if two made it, I would have been surprised because they're such voracious little meat eaters. Um, and they are the biggest of all the bettas and they're just kind of crazy. I have to put a lid on the tank on this one tank for sure. Now these guys just naturally, the Turkana, the Hemichromus exules, uh, this line is still very wild. Uh, it's only F2 or F2 maybe F3 um, because it came from Lawrence, then it went to Kenny and then to me and Lawrence had the wild ones. So these are still pretty uh, aggressive and kind of spontaneous in how they act. They're siblings. So right now there's not a total war going on, but the parents are the most incredible red that you ever see in this hobby. Um, especially when you give them live foods with, you know, carotenoids and, uh, and all sorts of stuff in there. This, oh, he's not very colored up today. He's actually uncolored up. I wonder if, if, uh, he went and murdered all his babies again. That's the only time I see him not colored up. Him and his lady are always having babies and they're always colored up. Um, and then I've got this big 40 breeder ready right now for whatever I want to put in here. We do have the, um, the polar female the little uh parrot and convict cichlid hybrid hybrid um that's in here but this tank is one of my older tanks and we've also got some uh some blue uh fish in here the um cochus tetras from colombia and then we have a bunch of the uh venezuelan venezuelan um corridora in here but other than that there's just room for new fish in here and for it to be totally rescaped. It's kind of just gotten overgrown with moss and low light plants living under the river floaters, which I just literally filled a bucket with. Um, and this tank over here, I uh, thought we'd check in on it because uh, the male's still the alpha male doing his thing. But what I did is I moved the, the big old convict cichlid in here. Look at this, this ram's horn snail. I've never seen a ram's horn, or a, a near red snail, sorry, get this big. This thing, can we see the patterns on it? Come on. Come on. So it's got zigzag patterns that are so hard to see because it's so big. This thing is bigger than a ping pong ball, and it's a near right snail. Uh, it's very old. It's probably three or four years old. Oh, and we have babies. Look at that. We have babies, everybody. I can report that is a baby. Yes, finally. I didn't see them as fry or anything else, but it appears we have babies. So, yay. 
yay for these unnamed uh, Lake Victoria Malungu uh, collection point. And again, Lawrence Kent is who collected those. And then we'll we'll check in over here real quick on the other uh, the other new pistols, which are Rotpunk, and these that means red spot. Uh, again, I'll do a species profile, but these guys are uh, coloring up and splitting up by uh, gender. They love eating live food, so I wanted to show you guys that before we did the bulk of the stream here, and then I'll get into answering more questions and all that, but I wanted to show you guys that as well as all the rest of the glow light Daniels that we got from Red Fish, Blue Fish here in Washington. Jason ordered more of these from the Czech uh, Republic, and uh, they're just a cool fish here. Let's feed a couple of them. They're not the most voracious hunters, even though all day long they're zooming around like a million miles an hour. Uh, but they're just not the most voracious hunters. Now the thick lip garamis, which I don't even see where they are. Oh, here's one. Um, these guys can actually hunt pretty good. Uh, and if we get one of these little uh, mosquito larvae in here, they'll go right after it and, and take it down quickly. Uh, the thick lip garamis, which are the, oh, here's more of them. Um, these are the uh, trichogaster, uh, trichogaster uh, labosia, labosia, I think is how you say it. But let's let one of these big old boys in here. That's one big enough that it could actually hurt a CPD. And see, we're at the phase in this tank where we're getting some algae in here um, that's pretty extensive. And I, I always resist treating it with chemicals and all that. Um, let's see if it nails that thing. Are you not going to go for it? Come on. Somebody. Oh, somebody did. Here's another little one. Here, we'll make it easy for you guys. They're all right there. Boom. The thing is with, with, with feeding mosquitoes, you don't want mosquitoes that end up not getting eaten. And here we have their little rummy nose that are in here, which is great. Here comes the, the beautiful... Uh, trichogaster labosia and some little cpds coming out but again i was going to say i'm probably going to do a whole video on how much algae is in here and how that's just part of what happens when you have a six thousand lumens light on 10 inches deep of water uh it's just the way the cookie crumbles you know so let's feed more of these guys well that's way too many um Look how many I collected from just my few little ponds just in probably 20 minutes before the show. It's, it's rather uh, remarkable. So let's see if these guys color up even more for us when we give them some food. Uh, there's also more of the glow lights in here because Jason uh, sold me the last of that group that he had in at the time. Um, so that was nice of him. And I want to shout out his his business which it's very unusual to see all the european varieties of fish and i'm trying to get him to import the uh the beautiful long fin uh, veil tail uh tetra uh neon tetra again but they ship extremely poorly and they have all sorts of health issues so i don't think he's gonna do it but and they're 15 bucks a pop, which is rough. But, uh, yeah, so there's a few issues with that. But I still think they're awesome. And, I don't know, I'd buy some more of them, even at 20 bucks a pop. Uh, but I'm a poor decision maker, right, guys? So, again, here we have a little female over here. Uh, the males turn a blue and yellow color on these Rothbunks. Uh, they have a yellow belly, and or uh, sorry, uh, they that's a female, I think. There, she's got the band over her. She's all yellow, like a bumblebee, 
Whereas the males have a blue and yellow and then kind of like a gray sky blue with the silver look uh, where their yellow is kind of on the belly. And then they've got blue above that um, that's iridescent. So they're kind of interesting, but we kind of have a few different phenotypes. If Mick M is watching, uh, I think this, I mean, it looks like a female with the colors, but at the same time, I see some speckling of red, which you guys probably can't see live uh, all around the face, which I thought was a trait that only the males had. So I'm a little confused on which genders, which I think that's another male back there. That's just not colored up. And I think uh, this here is another male. Whereas I think this is very clearly female with all the yellow all over. But again, those are another very unusual episto, and that's what Jason is known for, is his unusual epistos. And again, in here, no filter, no heat. Well, the heater is actually on today because I had the window open, but usually no heater. Um, it's just a little dinky, goes to 78. It only goes to 78, doesn't go to 11. Uh, and while we weren't looking, of course, they came in for the kill and they cleaned out all the little bushes. Uh, and, you know, that's just how it always seems to go. We can feed one more group. Um, and uh, we'll feed them well. But we're going to feed the, the tank that's over here because these guys are the most active fish I have. These are the the blue uh the the very beautiful blue lip buffalo cichlids as well as bettas as well as petricolas um cynodonus petricolas and uh let's just let's just see what happens let's let's just go crazy um so they've got the, and we got some young ones that I scooped out of that other tank too, but it's a female, uh, female blue lip have this kind of chain link pattern. The males are these big bruisers like this guy over here. And it's not the glass that's dirty for once. It's just mom floating around. But then we also have all these bettas that are siblings. Ooh, got that one. Um, that are in here too. So remember that, that I have all those plus them. We have. Anybody going to get this wiggly guy? Did you get him? I guess you got him. Um, then we also have the Crebensis in here, too. Well, these live blood worms are just the bee's knees. They're so full of nutrition for the fish. Now, the thing that they do lack is some calcium. Uh, sometimes they do lack calcium. Sometimes they do lack the... Um, Oh, here comes the other big boy of the tank, the big male betta. This guy is a bruiser, uh, is definitely the king of the tank. There's the secondary king, but that's the that's the main, that's the that's the alpha betta, <laughs> and here's the betta betta, um, or beta betta. Uh, it's beta betta, whereas these ones are all tertiary. Uh, I wouldn't consider them in the running for anything. That's a female. Um, but a lot of people are, are kind of uh, confused when they see that I keep bettas that have all their fins intact uh, in a tank with each other, nine of them in a 40-gallon breeder. But it's it's really down – here's another female. It's really down to all this floating uh, stuff. It, that's, that's what allows it to work. So – let me get back over to the chat and over to the live stream. I'm wearing a thick coat. I know you guys are just looking at my couch. Hold on. Let me, let me strip down do the, the full Monty over here. All right. I'll shut up. All right, guys, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear or see me when I break a mirror?
All right, so we got the tour out of the way. Now, I want to talk about with y'all, and let me get up the chat on my phone so I can actually see in real time because StreamYard is like awful at at um keeping up with the chat. It, it, it shows me members chats and some random ones and then anything with at the secret history. Um, but it doesn't even show me all the super chats sometimes. And that just drives me bonkers. Um, you know, the other thing I want to say is thank you so very, very much to all you guys who have become members. Um, it means a lot and it helps a lot. I mean, uh, like I said in the past, if you enjoy getting those extra episodes and whatnot, it, it it's an extra, it's an extra buck. 99 and why is this not playing for me look at this there's not uh there it goes i was gonna say there's not even a play button on on it for me to even play from um but now it loaded okay so now i've got your chats handy put them on a little tripod and now i can engage like a human should sorry guys sorry i'm just so bad um all right ba, 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 ba. whoa <laughs> $20 super chat from Dr. Awesome Dr. Awesome Anthony uh wow thank you very much my good sir cheers to you you guys like how dirty my hands are I've been mucking around in the fish tanks and the tubs outside getting pond season ready all day and my I, i've just like obliterated my my nail beds i'm gonna go need to get a, a i don't remember what that's called a pedicure manic manicure i don't remember which one it is anyways oh ped feet okay it's a manicure um so uh yeah about those long fins we'll see you know what you should do dr anthony you should here let's do it right now so we're gonna go there real quick um redfish bluefish he just got new fish listed i'm friends with jason um when he moved to washington i was working at the um at aquarium zen and i had my channel going but it was pretty small and he had actually found my channel and he was uh, came in and was like, hey, this sounds weird, but I watch you. And I was like, that does sound weird. No, uh, he's like, I watch your channel. Um, what's up? You know, and we became great friends. Um, and uh, I've watched him go through uh, several different little businesses related to the hobby from tissue culture to having a youtube channel of his own to you know you name it and um i want to show you guys the uh the the store he's got right now and what's in because this is where i got those apistas so if you guys are anywhere in the u.s and you're looking at it he also does i don't have any discount codes or anything um but uh he has much cheaper prices than the than the stores right in the city in our area anyways but he's got these back in which is crazy these are so beautiful live i did a tour of his store once and they were there but these are the manakapuru redback angels and they are like rusty to blood red they're scolara angels of course but then they've also got these main stripes and then they have some broken stripes too and they're just super pretty um they're pricey but they they came in at four inches uh i think he said four inches long with their tail uh so they're huge then he also got these uh double black german rams in oh that zoom in didn't really help that much uh and those are kind of cool. He, he, I think he also got another variety that has like a yellow face and orange on it. And then um, he, he has kind of his standby. But you guys saw my Trifasciata just a second ago. And mine, I would say, is way brighter than this one. 
but there you have it. Um, so that picture, while cool, isn't even representative of how bright um, some of his fish come in. Then he's got the A, which is the Episto numbering system. Um, oh, uh, oh, do you? You know Steve, huh? Um, <laughs> Dr. Anthony, Dr. Awesome uh, knows Steve. Yeah, um, let's just say I was let go of working there. He told me that, um, and I don't want to throw shade on him or anything, but he has a very specific personality. And uh, he said he was in, one, he definitely was annoyed that people would come in and recognize me from the, the internet. Uh, but two, he, he said that we both had artistic styles and his is very reserved and very Zen, like very uh, Takashi Amano. Um, and he went and actually like studied very deliberately to learn the ways of Takashi Amano's aquascaping before it was a, a big hobby. And so he kind of has a leg up on a lot of people that got into aquascaping later than he did. Him and Tom Barr um, are friends and definitely communicate, um, get pieces of wood sent up from Tom and shipments uh, every so often, which was cool to unpack. Uh, but it's one of, I, I would say it's Seattle's best looking uh, fish spot, but it is um, back in the dart frog days. He refuses to support the center. Yeah, um, it wouldn't. That doesn't surprise me. He's a very opinionated guy, and uh, I shouldn't talk too much. I'll get myself in trouble. But yeah, he's a uh, he's an intense guy. Uh, he's a very intense guy, and he's who I kind of did a, a basically two years off and on. Um, I would call it sort of an apprenticeship. Um, of aquascaping i'd go in and you know each day talk to him and do a little bit of this a little bit of that he'd give me feedback but he taught me the traditional iwagumi way of aquascaping now the other thing that he has that that jason has at his store he told me about these clown loaches he said they came in at three to five inches long and they're only $12.99. Like they're like four-year-old fish or five-year-old fish. And they're, you know, they're big. Same with these Pinoy clown angels. These are also really pretty. Uh, they're kind of like a blue um, clown. I don't know why clowns in the name. He and I were talking about that. And we're like, this doesn't make any sense. Hate that they call them clown. Nobody likes clowns. Um, so... But Serpe Tetras, only $3.99. There's something you could do with your tax return. Uh, and then he's got some uh, plant fertilizers and some, you know, plant stuff still. But um, I wanted to show you his Epistos real quick, um, what he's got in stock. Um, South American cichlids, where is it? He's got lots of good stuff. So I definitely do uh, vouch for his, um, the quality of his stuff. Uh, let's see here. Jason, uh, can also be a no nonsense kind of guy and an opinionated guy. Um, but he can also be a big old teddy bear. Uh, you know, it's, it's the fish hobby. What are you going to do? Every, you got, you got every kind of personality out there in the world. And then it's amplified for some reason. It seems like in our hobby, but what I wanted to show you were what he had. Oh, I guess he got some koi ones in. These Manakapuru Super Reds are super beautiful. Oh, he doesn't have those right now. Although I feel like he said he might have gotten some more in. In any case, you can message him. He doesn't list everything that he has sometimes. Um, but these little red dots on them are like blood red. And then this is like yellow, bright yellow. And then there's like an opalescent blue to them they're a very cool fish um and again kind of expensive but they're wild uh, they're either wild caught or european depending on what species um he's got going on this is odd he didn't put the epistos all together and they're also not listed with dwarf cichlids which there's not another page to check out what is going on he's got like a million of them
these, these are nice too. His gardener eyes. Um, where? Oh, he's also got some blue, platinum blue Madaka rice fish too, which I need to buy. I'm gonna buy some of those, regardless of my freaking, uh, <laughs> regardless of if I, you know, my tax return status. Uh, he also has a lot of endlers and other stuff like that. But oh, and he got a bunch of these guys, the uh, rocket killifish. Yes, he called them rocket killifish. They used to be called rocket killifish, and uh, this is crazy cheap too. The red chin pan jacks five bucks. Chili reservoir is three fifty nine. I don't know about where you guys live, but for me, that's super cheap. So that's pretty sweet. These super blue carry tetras are also really neat. I've been seeing them pop up in the hobby lately. Um, they're very pretty. Uh, I like them a lot. Where are all his epistos? Come on now. He also um, has a bunch of shrimp and other stuff in too. Um, I think he might have bought in some of the... Um, what are they? Rio Midori... Um, and sisters, oh, but he got a bunch of the glass fin blood tetras too, and the check bread, uh, axel rod eye, uh, you know, the uh, cardinal tetras. They have so much red, sometimes it goes all the way out into the end of the fin. The line bread in eastern Germany, and well, what was formerly eastern Germany, and the Czech Republic, and Poland, man, it is. Unlike any of our lines, it's pretty crazy. Um, oh, I'm in not in live chat. Sorry, guys. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna remove the pinned comment, and uh, hopefully, now I can see your guys' comments. Um, all right, yes, I can. All right, and I'm trying to pay attention too. So, if you need me, it's at it's the secret history living in your aquarium, it'll highlight it for me. Um, but he's also got these, which I don't like. They look like cockroaches to me. <laughs> um, Norman's lamp eye killifish dirt cheap three ninety nine. Um, so some of the stuff he has is just crazy inexpensive, even though it's really high quality European stuff. I'm not going to talk bad. Oh, he looks like he still maybe has some Danios or he got new ones, but the glow light Danio eight ninety nine. So worth it. I have 15 of those, um, and it's so worth it. I, I told him I'd gladly pay for them uh, because of how beautiful those fish are. He's got the red lizards, uh, the L11A, the whiptail uh, red lizard. This one, maybe Dr. Anthony knows, but it supposedly um, – is not a wild fish. This one is supposedly not found in the wild. It's a human made morph is what is the rumor online on the internets. Um, so I'd be curious to know if there's more info on that. Also, he got the jet black angels, which those are always great, but I'm trying to find, Oh, here we go. These zebra Akaras. Does he still have, Oh, he sold them out, but these I want to beg him to get more of these suckers because these are so cool. These black, dark, uh, Ivan Cara, uh, Zebra Akara, Rio Ikana. Very cool fish. Um, but okay, here we go. Here's all his epistos. Uh, this is what I wanted to get into. People don't know enough about freshwater epistos. Oh, right on. You're doing some uh, DNA barcoding on the red lizard fish right now. Awesome. Uh, I'd be curious if all the auto, the things that get listed as auto synchless, like for instance, auto synchless Robocop, is that actually an auto synchless or is it some other, you know, genus? Um, uh, let's see here. Yes, they can be definitely. Um, aggressive, the Ivan Caras. Uh, Alex Ivan Akara, over a few hundred growing up. Yeah, they are, um, they have a lot of babies. These opal, uh, Pistogramma opal, they're very pretty. Um, then he's got the red, the cockatoides, um, cockatoo. 
uh, dwarf double red. The then I think if we get into this next page, we'll see the meat and potatoes of his epistos. Yeah. So here, egg is easy. I super red. Oh, he's out of those right now. Um, he's just got so many epistos. Usually, I bought the last of these. So they're the Kaite River Dwarf Cichlid. And that's about how mine are coloring up. Mine might be a little more yellow, um, but at least I'm not failing super bad. Oh, I wanted this fish so bad. He sold the last one yesterday or two days ago, and I didn't know he had it. But And I'm not going to even try to say this Latin name. Afiosimion. Uh, Bivitadium fungi. Uh, but look at that fish. That's just a crazy beautiful fish. And uh, so very cool. Uh, and then he still has, I think he usually keeps about 15 species of apistos on hand, all European bred. Then he also has a bunch of. The, um, these are the same as the ones I got from Vinay, the Jinga Rubra or Jinga Sulferis um, line. Hung's Loai Dwarfs, these are very pretty, um, and he's got them in stock. Oh, here's what I got. Here's the Rotpunk uh, Epistos that I was talking about that I bought. Um, so this is a male with the blue... And then the yellow. We weren't seeing so much blue in the face, but it could be their age. It could be a number of things. Uh, then they've got the Panduro. This is probably the easiest uh, and one of the most relaxed, I would say, Apistos there is out there. Plus, they stay relatively small, like two inches, inch and a half to two and a quarter inches. But the Panduro dwarf cichlid, or sometimes called Panda or Pandarini, they're really great. Um, I love those. Uh, and he's got more banjo cats. They're only $4.99. I've never seen them anywhere near that cheap. So, uh, like I said, I don't have any codes or anything, but Jason just has cheap fish um that are not cheap fish he also has the rothkeel uh red shouldered severums the heroes and um he's also got a handful of bettas and other stuff like that i want him to import some more we tried to order rice fish literally this morning i was on the phone with him and he tried to order some more rice fish in but um, he's got still like the gold red cockatoides dwarf. Um, and some of the stuff you get out of Czech Republic and Eastern Europe is just such better quality than out of the U S their lines are much more intentionally bred and kept for no body mutations and malfunctions like these green tiger barbs these Czech bread ones he had, I've never seen such a crazy green uh, barb so thoroughly covered and uniformly, like not blotchy, not like some, but they all were covered in, in this dark forest to emerald green with the orange tips and the orange nose. The females have the silver face. Um, just super cool. Uh, and oh, he's out of rainbow shiners again. But in any case... I just wanted to show you guys that because that's where I got my epistos and I'll probably spend some uh, some more of my <laughs> income there. Now, uh, also, uh, I wanted to take you guys over to um, uh, let me take you down to aquatic arts. There's a few species on here that I've never seen before. And honestly, I, you guys know that I thought this looks so much like a dried shroom. I'm just going to throw that out there. They might need to adjust that. Or maybe not. Maybe they don't need to adjust that. But um, this right now, Aquatic Arts has some pretty cool stuff. 
And you guys know probably that I work with them in, in conjunction with them and that I'm working on a new site where they're literally going to allow everybody to set up a shop basically on their site. And it's going to be very much like eBay for breeders that are um, wanting to breed any, any amount of fish that's, you know, like if you're going to breed more than like 10 or 20 um, total, like, it can be small scale spawning, but they kind of, you know, want you to be quote unquote, a breeder, not just a hobbyist who happen to have a spawn and then uh, wants to move one group, but they're coming up with a new system that, that, that is an app and everything that will integrate with stores, with independent people, with anybody who wants to buy and it'll all be correlated um, against all state laws and everything. It's going to be really interesting. It's the, it's the, um, it's not site shippers only. Is it the new site shippers only? No, it's going to be called Vivi, um, is what it's going to be called. And if you go to Vivi.com, you will see that it's already been held and they kind of like the cat was out of the bag. So now I'm going to say that much. I'm not going to go into how it works, but I've been working on all the graphics and all the um, user experience skins and overlays. Um, and that's something that, you know, I um, basically, I want to be frank with you guys, but I'm Alex, so I, I can only be who I am. No, sorry, guys, that was a bad joke. But I, I basically wanted to tell you guys this, that um, I'm trying really hard with this channel. As you know, I'm, I'm trying so hard. I'm just a try hard. Um, but basically, um, I'm trying really hard and I'm spending probably 50, 60 hours a week between answering questions and, uh, looking up stuff, reading research papers, making, uh, videos, taking care of the fish, even more time than that. And then I'm also, not sleeping a whole lot because I'm also doing graphic design gigs at night and it's my fault. I live in Seattle. I took on all these fish, you know, that's on me, but I'm just, I'm just trying to say how important the memberships, the super chats, the merch, all that, even though merch usually goes to charity. Um, I just wanted to say how much that means to me when you guys support the channel, even with a buck 99, you know, it, it means a lot. And it's this weird phase where the channel's growing, but it hasn't grown enough where the ad revenue can make it so I don't have to take on all those side jobs. And it just takes one like extra bill or something. And then I'm kind of like, ugh, like I, it's not quite enough on its own. So I just wanted to be honest and say that like, it's a weird spot as a creator to be in. Uh, you're doing better than you've ever done before, than I've ever done before as a creator. And people are very generous but it's very interesting um, how you kind of hit this point where you're, you're like doing better, doing better. It's all just extra. I've got my day job. And then you transition to like, this is your day job. And then you're like, Oh, it's not enough with, you know, and it's kind of this roller coaster of, of ups and downs, but you guys help smooth it out. And I, I just wanted to let you know, I appreciate it. Uh, and obviously the goal is that nobody has to give money uh, at all. And that, um, you know, ads or whatnot could um, supplement that money enough. But YouTube keeps cutting what they pay uh, creators. Now, I'm going to make this full screen again, uh, the Aquatic Arts, because I want to show you guys a couple things that they have on special Um or that they just happen to have right now that I had never seen them carry before or that they're carrying and that I just love. And if you guys want to use the discount code, it's history secret, all caps one five. And it's good until the end of March or through the end of April rather. And then the start of May, May 1st, we're switching the code to secret one five secret 15 or secret 10. You get to use the 15% off code once, and then you get free dry shipping, uh, dry goods shipping, and you get um, entered into giveaways that we do a couple times a year. 
usually a few hundred dollar gift certificates and things. Um, and uh, also they generally tend to throw you in a, a couple extra uh, fish or crabs or shrimp when you use these codes. Uh, you know, they'll, they tend to throw you an extra one regardless, just cause that's, you know, they're, a, a, they have a good best practice uh, as a fish company but I've heard people say, oh, they gave me three or four extras when they bought like a dozen. Um, so they're very good good to the users uh, that, that drop that. But right now, as Dr. Anthony just posted, History Secret 15, that code. And if you use that, you can use History Secret 10. Um, and then what happens is they basically give me uh, a percent of that and I can buy fish and stuff with it. Oh, they literally just had this one earlier today. And I really was thinking, man, I want that Mandarin crab. Look at its eyes. They're so funky. Now, these are the semi-aquatic um, little crabs. The little vampire crabs have so many different color morphs depending on where they come from. And they're just so fun to watch. They're super pretty. And all of their... Um, Oh, the Yeti says, I got extra fish with my last order and happy stone cats up to 15 now. Right on. Um, everybody says, oh, I like him. Yeah, these guys are really cool, um, even though this specific one sold out. But they still have the Halloween one. They just got these back in, and they're like bright purple and orange, and they only get maybe an inch and a half, something like that. Um, they're pretty small. Let's see here. And they can they they like slightly alkaline water, but not too bad. Um, and that's just because they some of them are brackish. Um, but you can also do uh, biotopes with them, which is really fun. Yeah, two sizes or less, uh, two uh, two inches or less is how big they get. And just look at all the colors, like blue and yellow, uh, purple, red and yellow, uh, white and orange and yellow purple and orange uh yellow and crimson and orange they're really a neat little thing um and the other thing that i'm sure people are thinking about is tubbing season and that's why i also wanted to show um the fish that they've got going right now that i think are such good breeding stock you know i, I don't push a lot of products on the channel other than from well-vetted sources, but they do have the orange CPO Mexican dwarf crayfish. If you can have that in the state you're in, those are really cool. Uh, they're great for ponds. They can withstand cool temperatures too, and uh, they will breed. Um, they also have a whole lot of shrimp varieties. These are the best, hands down. These, uh, these little horn nearites oh one snail i wonder if that's right or if they have a bunch but these little mini nearites zebra nearites that are horned they're the best because um they are they they don't leave those little white eggs on everything very badly they hardly leave those and your fish will eat them for the calcium. And so you don't see them all over everything, but they still can eat the hardest diatome algae, which is awesome. Uh, so uh, Aquaball says, uh, Alex, my local fish store uh, have micro crabs. I don't know anything about them, so I left them alone. Uh, and Vazaroth says, uh, really torn between making an eight gallon. I'm moving to a 20 long uh, into our crab into a crab or hospital tank. Ooh, a 20 long is like perfect um, for a half underwater tank, like a, you know, a paludarium or a riparian tank because it's so long. You can do right halfway. Um, you can do an island in the center. It's really cool to do that. Um, yeah. Um, and again, look, they've got more of the red racers, which that's this, these red racers are what that giant one in my tank was. Uh, it's just five years old, four or five years old. Uh, and they also usually now they sell like A grade and B grade. 
So you can get like one for like two ninety nine if it has like a little nick. Like, let's see if they're doing that here. Yeah, they have um, B grade and A grade snails very frequently. Um, you could also message them and ask them. But these are the B grade. See how the tip gets chipped off a little bit or it's regrown? A lot of times it'll fill in turquoise and it actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, see, that's what, they, what happens when they get shipped very frequently. Um, but they're a great little fish. Or, I mean, a great little um, invert, rather. Um, and then they have the Thai micro crabs, the pom-pom crabs. They also have the big old, uh, they've got their African fish back. They've got the Japanese trapdoor snail, which is really cool. Um, kind of similar to the pagoda snail. Um uh rusty braids this is aquatic arts is the site being shown and there's discount codes to it too if you guys are interested um their shipping is expensive but it's gone up so much i mean i think it's like 60 to 60 bucks overnight but that's literally what almost any place is actually charging you it's just they're gonna have to charge you in the price somewhere whether it's the fish or handling and tax fee or you know whatever it is that they call it if it's unless it's going slow ground it's going to be that way now they have the gertrude uh um rainbow fish which are a great little pseudomagill they have the erythromicron these are in my like in my tank and they're being sold very small and young but they look pretty darn healthy which is great now, if someone's up for a challenge, I, I mean, I would love to have one of these. This is talk about a dream. Are the incredible, like here's a 1B grade. But there are some pro, uh, cambrious species of crayfish that are just bonkers beautiful. Um, and now they're also selling totally wild collected wild form neocaridinas that you can start your own lines with which a lot of people are kind of getting back to basics and doing they also have these which are awesome these are little limpets uh freshwater limpets with all sorts of different patterns um they're a uh, great for cleaning diatome algae that hard stuff that looks dusty on the glass almost nothing else will eat that off there other than a few select snail types um they also have the blue moscow guppies um oh and then these green jade shrimp other than um grant at eater at garden of uh i would say that they're tied they're probably from a similar source but these shrimp are the most green and true breeding green line i've ever seen in our hobby ever um would vi would vampire crabs be good to breed for profit totally um kenny and danny of danikin aquatics had theirs breed already and um yeah definitely um and the babies are cute they're just little versions of the adults they're not larval or anything weird um they're totally adorable um and i mean they're very inexpensive on this website, but I mean, they are, um, they're, I mean, I think they could be sold for whatever your market says. I mean, 30 bucks doesn't seem unreasonable to me, um, compared to what other people pay for things. Uh, they have also Aranda goldfish, a uh, good outdoor tub fish, uh, starting at 10 bucks. They're the nice pretty body, and I think they were, uh, yeah, they're U.S. tank bred. Um, now, here's another uh, here's another dream critter, which is the Royal Tiger Delhizi Bicher, uh, Polyopterus Delhizi Royal Tiger. Um, look at this crazy dinosaur and its beauty man it, you can see the evolution happening before your eyes almost it almost looks like those are gills i mean like they're just so strange morphologically they are just so strange um 
but $83 and these fish live a long time and they get pretty big. Um, yeah, it says 125 definitely. Uh, and that they'll get, um, 16 inches. Um, so over a foot, they're not like the huge bitchers or, or by shears, however you want to say it. They also have the Kubota Raz, uh, Boras, which are um, really a great uh, fish. Love those. They show up so well in tannic water. And same with the Harlequin and the Lamb Chop. They're always good standbys. But what I wanted to show you guys is the other thing they're starting to offer. And this is where, you know what, I need to look at you guys when we talk about this one. This is where it is really important um and i feel like people are mm, that they don't understand how just how important it is um so i want to talk to what is going on here no that and then we do there we go Wait, but let's swap that for a moment. Uh, this stream yard sometimes, man, it just aggravates me to no end. All right, we're going to solo layout for just a minute, guys. So um, what I was going to say is this is so important. Vote with your dollars. If you're one of those people saying, oh, no, it's not sustainable. We can't be catching fish this way. It's not right. Don't We don't want to be, uh, you know, encouraging bad uh, actors and using cyanide and over harvest and all these things. And what if we could only breed them in America? Aquatic Arts has made it their mission to import, breed in their new facility Give them out to anybody who wants to breed in their network of friends and now on Vivi, anybody who wants to breed things and then have them tank raise sustainably in the U.S. and try to keep them affordable even too. Because with shipping prices, I mean, holy heck, uh, <clears throat> you could see how you could keep it affordable. But what I was going to say is they've got the um, they've got the Neon Tetra that's tank bread and then they have an albino one that's tank bread they have a blue diamond head one which i love these they're um i think it's for three of them the 1053 yeah school of three these guys glow like no other in their head um it doesn't picture doesn't do it justice whatsoever uh but i always have loved those i want now the fish that I wanted to do this whole stream about other than uh, more Pseudomagill uh, uh, Luminatus, which are just one of my favorites. The, the thing that I seriously um, was like jumping out of my seats over. And I guess you could say the uh, rice fish too. Look, they've got the black ones with the lame uh, or lame or lame uh pattern which is iridophore scales covered in reflective stuff which makes them sparkle like little jewels in the metallic eye um rather than the jet black ones and they also have the semi long fin gene uh good night uh paul mccarthy you have a good one my friend so then they've got the red caps. Now, every red cap I've seen in the country, basically, came from this line. And it's the line I have. It's not a completely straight line. Um, you're always going to get, like, some of them having... See how there's a little bit of orange mid-body, even if the head is perfect? Uh, there's usually something like that. But they're pretty darn close, and it's just impressive to me that you could selectively breed a color like a dot on the head or red on the head or orange on the head. But those are going to be great for tubbing. And I mean, people are selling those for 15 to $20 locally. Aquarium co-op has them, I think for 15 99 um, because someone locally bred them. I think and Dean got a hold of some maybe. And then 
the story is as that went. <laughs> so, hold on one sec. Okay, so then they've also got the Yuhiki. Um, they've got the kind of yellowish ones. They've got the Pearl Scale, which I just, the Pearl Galaxy Madakas, which are the ones that I have that we looked at at the beginning. They've got Daisy's Blues. Now, these guys are not good for outside um, unless you live in a hotter climate because they are um, from Indonesia and Java, and they're going to be um, used to uh, the Woware. Man, that's hard to say. W O W O Wo Wo Ray Wo Wo Ray Wo Wow Ray I think it's Wo Wa Ray, but um, they're used to the tropics, and so yeah. Now these red panda melon barbs, these may be a candidate also, and these were locally tank bred for them too, I believe. But the males on these, ooh wee, they're pretty. They look like a slice of watermelon. Um, or something on their skin just beautiful looking um let's see yeah deal alert deal alert um and yeah 72 uh but they can take into the, the high 60s 68s no problem a lot of these barbs especially the indian and bangladeshi or or inlay which is myanmar um they are up in the mountains, three to four thousand feet up, and the water is a little bit cooler there. So remember how the Norman Lampi Achilles at Jason's store were three ninety nine. Well, these ones are five, basically five thirty three each. Um, so it shows you the difference in pricing. But also shows you the difference in U.S. tank bread versus foreign tank bread versus whatever you know, whatever it may be. These two fish, I need. I just need more of them. I miss them so much. Um, Alex, how are those black rice fish doing? Um, they're okay up there. They are very shy. They were hiding in the first part of the stream the whole time. Um, this. Uh, Hemiotis uh, gracilis. I love these. These slender hemiodo, hemiodo, uh, hemiotis um, or hemiodon species in general, I just think are really cool. They're, they're a little big, um, but they're just very cool. You can get six of them. Man, I need to buy these too. A group of six of them for $47.99. And they've got that cool tail that has the line going down and then the red. It's just, I love those long and slender fish that just look fast. They look like a barracuda or something. Um, and then these are the only true, uh, the Brachiogobius uh, xanthomelas are the only uh, species that is truly, out of 14 species, is the only true uh, freshwater born and bred and raised species out there. There are plenty that can come and go from the water, but that's the only real true one. Now, they also have the Taiwanese micro dragon goby. If you guys have seen me feed this thing scuds and other little critters, you'll know what a crazy little dude he is. And these are an incredible fish um, for $16.99. I think it's well worth it. You do kind of need to have fresh food, live food on hand. Uh, but they might have started to eat other stuff. So it's not a death sentence like it once was. Um, these are the 201 uh, Snowball Plecos. These are also great. Only $39.99 for the babies. Pretty wild. And again, Aquarium Co-op was selling these, I think, for $149 a fish. And they are $39.99 for the juveniles which to me I, I can't believe i think these mega clowns are cool too but they get way big um they get a lot bigger and then the fish i thought was coming up next but isn't apparently uh this orange seam pleco that's incredible for 20 
four ninety nine for a baby. How much are three? Yeah, I mean, get six if you want to be guaranteed. But that's the price that I've seen these at Aquarium Co-op and Aquarium Zen for one fish. And they're $129.99 for six. So, killer deal. Plus, you could get 15% off that. Uh, also, the green phantoms. $54.99 is pretty fair for a couple inch long uh, one. But what I really wanted to show you guys were these. These are brand new to the market. These are CW009. And these are Corydora Green Lasers. Look at these. Um, they are incredible. I got some pictures behind the scenes when these arrived. Look at their nose. Their, their onodontodes are different. They have like a, a sheath. Or a covering and no like real snout or any vents or sensory stuff really on the tip of that nose, which is interesting. Um, their onodontodes just hang down. Do your onodontos hang down? Can you pull them on the ground? Can you drag them on a fish? Would you eat stuff out of a ditch? But look at these green laser lines. So this is a totally new line um, being found somewhere, but now they're being tank bred. And it is essentially, what, 70, what is that, $70 a pop, uh, three, 140, uh, not quite, six, $60 a pop, I guess, yeah, $60 a pop, but think about selling these, the orange lasers are still going for 20 bucks, 30 bucks sometimes locally if they're full grown. Uh, and that brings me to their orange lasers, which have come down all the way to 20 bucks or so a fish. Very cool fish, though. And now being recognized as not just the Aeneas, um, they're also saying it's the CW010. Uh, and uh, that variant could well be a species, they're saying. This black Venezuelan quarry is the same as the orange Venezuelan that I have. Uh, there's also a red Venezuelan. Then there's the bronze and green uh, Aeneas, which is what the Venezuelans are. They also have Adolfos. Um, this is the other one that they had that I haven't seen in a long time is the elegant quarry. I haven't seen that one in a long time. It's got a pointy adipus fin. Uh, and then the false armadas uh, or armadas uh, quarries are really beautiful too. Um, I like these with their sharp sail. Look at that. That is crazy. And they're about 20 bucks a pop. Man, spawn some of those. Ooh, we. If they would hybridize with something like this here, man, you'd have a cool fish with that sharp spike and then they've got the the other modeled uh palustris um or palatus rather then they've got this which is a quarry i never see in the hobby the little quarry with its little uh pointy adipus horn <laughs> and its tiny little fin with its front uh its front what do you call those not staves but it's uh it's bone or cartilage little spike um is shorter than the ones behind it which is kind of interesting um uh, yeah uh oh yeah you want red laser long fins yeah i could see why um they do have the aeneas uh these are just the normal red ones that are a little more bright and cheery than the ones that were left after heavy harvesting of other Aeneas species in the region. And then they've got the albino Aeneas. So there are like seven or eight different Aeneas variations. They also have the uh, Venezueliana, which is also Aeneas, uh, usually is how it's categorized. Then they've got the violet smudge uh, quarries. I bought some of these. They're great. The true Julii's uh, without the maze pattern on the face, they're always great. 
and then they've got the false upside down catfish. Uh, then they've got the Asian stone anchor catfish, um, twenty eight ninety nine. Which when you saw Jason's price, it was bonk, you know, bonkers. He's like five bucks or something. Then they've got the purple uh, Kuli loach, the pong, uh, the uh, pongio or pongio, um, bitia mock, and. I don't know. This was the other big one that I really want to is the Redfin Tiger Loach. They still have a group of six, but a group of three for only $23.99. Look how crazy cool these things look. They look like a little, I don't know, a dog or something or a little dinosaur mixed together with a fish. Uh, these ones can take cooler water yet again. Uh, and they also... Um, they get fairly big with the average adult reaching uh, nine or well, 10 inches, really just wild. Um, I feel like there's got to be more chat than I'm seeing tonight. I'm only seeing like I see they're cool looking wiener dog. I see banjo cats rock and I see black quarries, black rice fish, black night rams, black ghost night fish. Uh, in a cannon tank would be fire. Yeah, if you ever saw them. Also, these Borneo spotted uh, sucker loaches are beautiful with their green dots and their blue tail. Um, Panda Gara, another incredibly entertaining and fun animal to watch. Uh, the Doctor Fish, which is the uh, Rufagara, which are the ones that do the pedicures in Asia. <laughs> They've got those too. They've also got the reticulated hill stream loach, but uh, the rosy loach is another neat one. Look up another picture of this tri banded sumo loach. There are some really bright pictures out there on the internet. Um, let's see here. Let's let's Shustra Shustra Baltiata Shustra. Baltiata. I kind of like the the sound of that. I like it like that. Oh, oh. Um, oh, you know what? I want to do another huge shout out to the two people who have messaged me uh, via my email, but they they've gave me. Uh, somebody sent me five bucks and somebody sent me 20 bucks on PayPal and that doesn't get half of it or 40% depending on how things are, are set up on which version of chats and streams and stuff. But YouTube doesn't take 40% right off the top. And um, by the way, you saw Jason's how black they were compared to these ones. I mean, no contest. The Europeans are way ahead. Uh, but they've got this nice gold Severum. Uh, they've got the clown angelfish again that that he also has. So it's kind of interesting. Doesn't say European bread necessarily, but um, it's a good chance that they could share a breeding locale. Uh, so then where is the last... Man, oh, these already sold, but the Horseman or the Cory Equus are so cool. So I always come here, and like right now, um, I've got my wish list, and I'll add stuff to it. And then it'll it'll make a sound a little alarm if it comes into the shop. Um, but I just wanted to show off some of the really cool species and some of them are pretty new that don't get seen a lot in the hobby. Um, you know, price match compared whatnot. Rainbow shiners are another incredible fish for tubbing. They're going to need quite a bit of oxygenation and flow and, uh, food, but, uh, they're a great fish for a larger size tub where they can circle it, maybe with a power head or a fountain. Um, they're really cool fish, and they turn literally like this. They literally turn from this plain look, like the ones I have now, 
to this vivid. And this is nothing being, no trick of the uh, intensity or anything like that. That's just how they are, how they is. And they're 10 bucks each. Last year they were 15 each. So they are slowly but steadily coming down, um, which is probably good for everybody, right, guys? Uh, all right. So I just wanted to show you guys that stuff. There's lots of other good stuff on their site, but I don't want to sell you guys on, on uh, a bunch of other stuff right now. I just wanted to show you guys what I was excited about. So do we have any last questions before I sign off? We're coming up on two hours pretty soon here. And these headphones are hot. I want to catch the last of the sunset and also see my beautiful magnolia tree out there. Uh, beautiful blooming. Go sit outside with my wife for a little while. But I have to say... Um, Oh, right on, Sage. Uh, that fish mop, I like that. I've seen Dean make all sorts of crazy fish mops since he's in my club. Uh, it's pretty cool. Can you do a headbang before you leave? I can try. Hold on. How much uh, they sell those little red shiners for? They're 10 bucks a piece. And you can catch them in rivers in Alabama for free. Uh, well, it would be a felony, but yeah. Um, let's see here. <laughs> I can't do too much with my uh, with my uh, neck injury. Yeah, you have to breed those for sure. The Rainbow Shiner sell for a lot locally too, like 15 bucks I've been seeing them. Which I'm like, how are you supposed to ever get, afford a school of them? Come on, guys. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess that's it, is we need to get everybody breeding these things so that then the price comes down. Um, there are wild sail fin mollies where I am that have become a uh, dream fish. Oh, right on. That's cool. Uh, that's great. I have a question. What would you think a great tank mate is for a bicer? Mormorids are pretty good. They know to stay away from them, like the larger mormorids. Um, any of the larger cichlids work okay out of, like, Lake Victoria, too. And then a lot of the other... Um, like Chelsius or um, like the pink tail ones or like the middle, uh, the uh, Central American uh, critters, like the, I don't know, like, uh, I mean, even honestly, it sounds like even a convict cichlid or, or a Severum or a hero. But um, the other one that works sometimes is um, different geophagus uh earth eaters of different kinds but really i mean these fish back here are ideal these like um uh haplochromis heterochromis um the bigger lake victorian beautiful big fish uh, the wet spot has a lot of those um and they work pretty well um yeah i think i think that would be good is there a pleco that would fit in a 10 um, yeah, totally. There, there are, um, some people might debate you, but I, I think, um, I think that the, um, the, the, the general thought is that the, um, L201, which we looked at at Aquatic Arts, I think that one is usually under three inches, so you can keep it there. I have another one, the Sultan Pleco, um, the Sultan Dwarf Pleco, that is um, that is uh, also pretty small. But even some of your ancestress stay small. It just kind of depends on the the group. You know, I have some that have been bred literally to stay small. Like that's been part of the breeding goals. Now I'm trying to show you guys underneath here. There is a Sultan Pleco underneath here that's only, you can see the outline of it, um, but it's only, let's see if we can get her to come over. Here we go. So, I don't want her to nail me with her pectoral, but she's only two inches, 
and she's going on three or four years old now. Um, and she's a very beautiful fish. Um, so there are some little cichlids that you can definitely keep. A 20 long is way better than 10, honestly, just because they poop a lot and they create a lot of bio waste. Um, but it's it's doable if you if you do it right with with hides and caves and all that stuff. Why are some plecos so expensive? Um, some of them don't spawn until their age like seven or eight and others get like two feet long. And so it's a lot of work to keep them until they're that size. And then on top of that, some of them have something like, you know, 200 babies where others have maybe five babies at a time and they tend to rot very frequently and they only do it seasonally. Like they only have babies in October, no matter where they are in the world. Um, and like, like leopard frogs and zebra plecos tend to, uh, be a little limited. Um, the, the, um, the, uh, petricolas or not petricolas, the, um, peclotias or, or peclodias, they are, um, meat eating ones so some are actually pretty expensive to feed too plus they're just a mess to clean up after for years and years um and uh yeah so um i have lots of free trinidad sailfin plecos in my area yeah the sailfins the rubber uh lips the common pleco i don't like them they just get too big um they don't clean algae well. Oh, look who's out. This is going to be terrible quality because it's with my laptop. But my my beautiful little Enigmata Chromius Lucansi, she's out. She's blue and purple. Um, we looked at her earlier, but she's one of the rarest dwarf cichlids in the world, probably. One creek in um, one part of Africa, one, one uh, country in Africa. You know, this is interesting. Look at this. Since I put the rice fish in there, this one little white cloud is doing this weird tip thing where its tail fin is hovering up like it has a swim bladder issue. I don't know what's going on. That's odd. It's like pulsating and tipping like, like it can't stay level. I have to keep an eye on that and perhaps treat it. Um... I always wonder if just breeders and breeders hopefuls dropping 150 or more dollars on a pleco is like the Bitcoin market. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it is a little bit um, speculative. It is a little bit um, niche and just like if you're into that, you're into that. If you pay that, you pay that like Rolex watch or something like sure. They're a little bit better. Are they? a hundred times better than, a, than, a you know, than, than these plecos. Like should this pleco be $200 for this little dwarf, beautiful. Uh, I mean, I think it's an awesome fish, but these guys go for 10. Uh, well, I mean like a, a normal ancestors, those are the original uh, wild 1970s strain of, lemon plecos that really should be called cheddar plecos but there's a cheddar creek pleco that confuses it so yeah um michael allard i breed long fin, fin plecos nice yeah very cool yeah plus there's morphs that are rare that add to value money wise too um let's see here uh fish tropic i'd be interested in seeing what you're talking about rainbow shiners so, yeah they're only found in the what is it the allegheny is it the allegheny the farthest north they are but the cahaba river and then the kisahatchee and a few others that go down into like georgia mississippi but it's mostly alabama and tennessee where where you see the rainbow shiners now there's red shiners and orange shiners and there's the red mountain dace uh there's a whole lot of other stuff that's real similar dr black good day you mob what's up how's it going buddy uh buddy old pal buddy old hanging out too late at night with me buddy um i'm just about to sign off we're just uh looking at all of the fishies and uh, fish all the fish tickles um 
So, yeah, and my Lake Inlay tank, which, Dr. Black, you can probably swim over there to Myanmar and and uh, collect some of this stuff for me. Um, Nur Mohammed, uh, quick question. Hello from Singapore. Ah, yes, I remember. Uh, do you recommend to do 100% light for six hours or 70% light for eight hours? So if it's a high-tech tank and it's new, I would say do the hundred percent for six hours. If it's an older tank, uh, six months plus it's, it's cycled and seasoned. definitely, um, 70% for eight to 10 hours. Uh, my community tanks out in the other room, I'll leave the light on for 12 or 14 hours and I don't get a spot of algae. Um, once they're at equilibrium, you know, if I mega dose fertilizers, it can throw it off. But like this one here, this one's just collecting and I only have the light on for six hours, but it's super shallow. It's running on CO2 and it doesn't have a ton of fast growing plants either. Most of the plants are kind of middle growing. Um, what a coinky dink. You're about to start. Oh, Dr. Black. We'll go watch Dr. Black's stream, everybody. He's an Australian degenerate who uh, is lots of fun. And uh, we're just going to cruise by real quick here. But this was the tank I was talking about when I said that I don't have to do any work um, on it as far as for algae control. Ow, why did you do that? That that ain't, You guys probably can't even see it. But this is a Twin Star Light, the, the newest S series. And you can see the pattern of the light there, red in the center super powerful and uh it this without co2 or anything running right now it'll still give you all the pinks and stuff because it's just that powerful i mean the red root floaters are a freaking blood red looks like something got murdered it looks like meat which is kind of gross um and even under the twin star ea which is a 200 dollar light you still get pretty red reds coming in i need to trim both these tanks very heavily they're just kind of a mess at the moment and the lighting on a laptop camera sucks so um, we'll look at those another time but in any case uh i think we're gonna wrap it up here i really want to thank all of you for the super chats for the good questions the comments the thoughts if you want to buy anything at Aquatic Arts, that's great. Uh, May 1st, the codes change, and I'll put them in any video that's new. We'll have the new code, whereas the old videos, obviously, will still have the old code. I'm not changing 950 videos, but it, hopefully it says go check out the newest code in the latest video um, if, if you're interested in it. But again, um, Monster Fish Gal, you rock my world. I need to get you a gift certificate or something again because... You are just incredible. You are the best mod ever, best admin, best, uh, well, we'll just call it mod. That's what everyone else calls it. But thank you so much, uh, Lori. I appreciate you greatly. Appreciate you all greatly. Uh, I'm going to head out of here, but thank you all again. And uh, like I was saying earlier when I cut away from this other screen and I said, Thank you for the Patreon and PayPal supporters. Patreon, really, I don't have that many perks on there. It's really just kind of if you want to see more stuff, want to let me do more research. I'm doing an episode a day and plus one. I'm doing eight episodes a week on average right now with two live streams, two uploads, and then four shorter videos that are on the Aquatic Morning Show. Or if you're a member, you get to see them. But this week, I did the last free upload that I'm going to do for a while. So if you like those where I just bring up anything that's new in the academic journal and publishing world or the hobby, um, I've got that. You can get that for a buck ninety nine, and it really helps the channel keep running. I, I try to keep it really affordable and they give me uh, about half of that at the end of the day. But it adds up a buck a person adds up big time. And uh, it's just it's very nice for that reliability. But in any case, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Sorry if you just hopped in. Uh, we'll have another live stream on uh, Friday. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Love your plants. Love your fish. Love one another. And love yourself. Because if 
if you don't do that, you're not going to do good at the other stuff. So, all right, guys, take it easy. Have a good one. And I'll talk to y'all later.